Uh, today, dear brothers and sisters, uh, for our Friday community message, we have none other than Dr. Muzammal Siddiqui with us. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Siddiqui. Thank you for having me. Um, so I wanted to kind of touch bases um, pertaining to last week's uh, Friday community message. We had Imam Tariq Atta. Uh, who came in and talked about uh, Tawheed and social reform. With what's taking place in our current climate, uh, with you know, uh, systematic racism, um, the, the killing of George Floyd, uh, Sheikh Tariq Atta came and talked about the institutionalized racism that's being seen and how, not just that, but the idea of <laughs> how racial biases are usually ingrained in our brains from a very earlier on, you know, since the day we're born, you know, it's something that is taught, you know, if, if you were to like, you know, for instance, how raci racism is taught to us from a very beginning of time, it's an ideology that has been embedded in us. Um, and Sheikh Tariq Qatar beautifully explained that uh, scenario. But today we're taking a different turn. Uh, and for that, we, we have Dr. Muzammal Siddiqui, one of our own beloved community leaders, uh, from Islamic Society of Orange County. Um, Dr. Siddiqui, now I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, discussing the fact that the disease is still spreading after the riots that took place here uh, in LA and all around the nation. We've seen and uh, data showed that, you know, even the news reported that there's been an increase of over 300% of, uh, you know, uh, cases that are on the rise when it comes to COVID-19. Um, so what can we do as a community uh, since, you know, the state laws are allowing the businesses to, to open up again? And what are the risks like? And what, what can we do as a community to prevent, um, you know, uh, further uh, getting the disease, you know, from when families and individuals come to the mosque? What can be done there? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Wali, for inviting me for uh, this uh, program. I uh, give my greetings to the whole community. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our community, uh, to keep us on the right path and, and save us and protect us, protect our families, our children and uh, protect the humanity, all people, because we should be concerned of all people regardless of their races or colors or nationalities, because we are all uh, one human being, children of Adam and Eve. And in this time, it is very important to remind us about that because of the so many uh, divisions and differences have occurred and people have become, uh, you know, we're not caring for others. So it is important to care for each other. And we, especially Muslims, Muslim Ummah, our responsibility is that we should treat everyone, those who are of Islamic faith, as brotherhood. In the believers are brothers and sisters to each other. And this is uh, this brotherhood and sisterhood is beyond uh, colors or races or nationalities. It is the it is the brotherhood of faith. Of course, there is a brotherhood of humanity that all human beings are brothers and sisters as our Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say in some of his uh, du'as, some of his prayers, he used to say, Allahumma inni ashadu anna al-ibadah kulluhum ikhwa. Oh Allah, I bear witness that all human beings are brothers to each other. So all human beings are brothers to each other. But there is a special brotherhood and that is the brotherhood of faith. And brotherhood of faith is something that we have to work on. Especially, we have a very large uh, Afro-American community who are Muslims. Uh, actually, this is the largest ethnic group that are Muslims in America. Um, almost one third of the total Muslim population are Afro-Americans. So you can see, as, as an ethnic group, this is the largest one. And it is very important that uh, immigrant community people of other races and other colors uh, and Afro-American brothers and sisters, we all should work together. We all should cooperate with each other and more and more relationship we should develop. We should visit each other's mosque 
we should invite people of uh, that community to our homes to our families and meet with them and uh, cooperate and also see what are their needs help them in our in their needs and they help us in our needs so in this way we have a mutuality a relationship so this is a, a very important point that we should remember but at the same time as we are going through in the last four months with this covid 19 and uh, we are thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our masajid that were closed for uh, more than three months uh, now uh, the rules have been relaxed and people are allowed to have their places of gathering places of worship and our masajid are also slowly opening up so people are coming back to the masajid which is a wonderful thing to, to happen uh, but at the same time uh, it is a test for us as it was a test when the masajid were closed that we be patient and continue our ibadah our worship at homes but now it is also a test because COVID-19 is here it has not gone away and actually in some areas it is spiking up its danger is its risk has increased and especially here in Orange County in California a lot more people are going to the hospital and, and suffering from that so um, we have to be very careful we have to be very cautious don't take this lightly and there are massages that have opened but at the same time massages have put rules and guidelines and these guidelines should be strictly followed uh, people are asked to make their wudu at home bring their masala with them uh, check their temperature if it is more than 100 should not come to the masjid and even at the masjid the, temp the temperature is checked and uh, they should wash their hands uh, often also have hand sanitizers in their pockets right? keep that uh, and then um, they uh, have to have re remember the social distancing social distancing and masks and hand sanitization these are very very important things that people should keep in their mind and also anytime any of you feel that you are not well uh, you are not uh, feeling well you're feeling sick or ill uh, it's better to stay home and pray because it is not obligatory for you in that situation to come to the masjid and we have said already the council of north america that under the circumstances it is not obligatory for muslims to come for every prayer to the masjid or for juma prayer to the masjid because still we have in an emergency situation we have a difficult situation so those masajid that were able to open alhamdulillah they're open and people are coming there those massages because of their uh, lack of funds or lack of uh, enough uh, uh, personnel uh, or some other reasons they are not able to open the communities should pray home and inshallah they will receive their reward and blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but follow the instructions follow the guidelines uh, very carefully strictly because we all have to be cautious we all have to be careful this is a test of our our patience it is a test of our faith and also it is a test of our discipline uh, sometimes we see that people are uh, coming to the masjid and praying and keeping the social distance when they are in prayer uh, so they are about six feet away from each other uh, which is important but after they leave the prayer then <laughs> they forget about that i mean after they leave the prayer they are very close to each other they don't keep that distance so distance is, uh, I know it's difficult, we like to be close to each other, we like to embrace each other, uh, we like to shake hands, but we cannot do that at this time. So you have to protect yourself and you also should not contribute in the spread of this disease, this the virus. Uh, this virus is a very strange kind of virus, you will not know, you may not feel that you have it, but you may have it, or it may appear after... 10 days after 14 days it may appear 
So for all these reasons that everybody, mashallah, now is learning about that. Every day we are talking about that. So keep these things in mind because we keep forgetting and we have to be reminded again and again. Uh, and we, some people uh, started taking it lightly as if there is nothing. They think that, oh, don't worry about that. No, we should worry about that because it's happening. A lot of people are suffering. So it is important to be careful on, on this issue. Uh, Alhamdulillah, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to come to the masjid because a few months ago we did not know how long will it take. Some of us were talking about it may take one year. It may take more than that. So it is, Alhamdulillah, within four months we are there. So take this ad advantage of this opportunity, but at the same time, uh, careful, because it may, we may lose that. Uh, if uh, it spikes up more, uh, the county and the state uh, authorities, they might decide to close up again. So why, why, why lose that? We should not do that. Because we have, we have to be careful about this. So I hope, inshallah, our community will take uh, these things uh, seriously. And uh, I, we pray, we should always pray, Allahumma rafa'anna hadha al-bala. Allahumma rafa'anna hadha al-bala. Allahumma rafa'anna hadha al-bala. Allah, remove this bala from us. Remove this bala from everybody. I mean, um, thank you very much, Dr. Siddiqui. Um, and I think the community has, has done a wonderful job and there's always room for improvement. Um, and not just that, but um, I know since the massages are being opened, uh, we've seen the community, even myself, I tried to you know, register myself uh, to come back to the masjid. And I think people are just so excited to go back into it. And that's why they can really stay away from, for instance, you know, uh, our, our beloved community leaders like yourself and other friends and family members because everybody's been in quarantine so it's, <laughs> it becomes difficult so when we do see someone from the community we love to you know uh, get closer we, we love to give hugs um, but I think the message that you give very beautifully is that if we want a long-term uh, sustainable system and plan for us to keep our masajids uh, running and functioning we must abide by the rules and laws that are regulating our institutions um, thank you um, and for those that do not know, I don't know if you, about yourself, Dr. Siddiqui, but I've actually, I don't know if I should say, I've had the pleasure to get a COVID-19 testing. So what they did was I was coughing uh, about two weeks ago. I had a really bad cough um, and it wasn't stopping. And then I had chest uh, sneezing and um, I had a runny nose. So they took, you know, I went to the ER. I was like, you know what, this might be, symptoms are kind of COVID-19, but uh, it's good to go. So I went, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, um, which is very painful. The COVID-19 testing could be painful uh, for those that do have it. You know, they'll, they'll grab a straw, a long stick that's like a straw, and they'll, they'll plug it in your nose all the way. Um, and and uh, it, it can become, a, it can be uncomfortable, but, you know, it's good to do. Um, you know, I realized that I didn't have the COVID-19, alhamdulillah, it was negative, that I had seasonal flu. And that what it, that's what it was, and um, and I think for those that have not taken the test, please do so. If you you know if if you uh, do have coughs or sneezing, maybe Dr. Siddiqui can talk more about this. But I also wanted to kind of re, re uh, kind of turn the question around, Dr. Siddiqui, since we're still in the, in, the, uh, in this topic of COVID nineteen. I wanted to bring the issue of funerals. Um, if you can put some emphasis on this based on your advice and you know, what cautious or caution can we take regarding funeral gatherings and, and the number of people that, that, that should be there. And reason why I ask is, and this was a, a scenario that actually took place in the Afghan community. Um, and this was something that was brought up by brother Masood Nasimi as well. Um, you know, we've had funerals uh, not too long ago. You know, people are passing away and then uh, COVID-19 is here. So families are going to funeral services, you know, um, and, and, and what we've realized and what we've found out that when, when they go back home, the likelihood and what has happened is that family members that are over the age of 65 have also caught COVID-19. They're not doing well at, at the moment. Um, you know, so what, what's, what advice would you give uh, to those that are over the age of 60 or 65, because that is the population that is uh, mainly, you know, in, in, in a severe category where they're told not to go or, or not to have any form of interaction, right, with a lot of people, or the younger generation or family members who actually 
do go out to funeral services and then they come home, you know, catching the COVID-19 and then their parents catch it. But how can we prevent that? And what is your advice for that? Well, first of all, um, we all must realize that uh, attending the funeral prayer is for the kifaya. That means it's not on every individual to have uh, go to Janata prayers and to attend the burial. So it is a, there is a great reward for that. To, uh, to attend the Janata prayer, but it's not an every person. If some people do it, they have done it in, in, uh, on behalf of everyone. And they are, um, uh, if a person dies uh, without uh, COVID-19, I mean, normal deaths or because of some other disease, so it's not because, because of the coronavirus, then uh, of course the treatment will be different. But at the same time, one has to find out because at this time, there are a lot of suspicions, fears. So one has to make sure that it is not because of the coronavirus. If it is a coronavirus situation, then one has to uh, take all the precautions. The body should be handled uh, by professionals, people who know how to handle it. So they know, uh, they have their, their gloves, they have their all the uh, things that they put down, protective gear that they have. So those things that they put that uh, on themselves and they are the one who will handle it. If it is possible to wash, they can wash. If it is not possible that the body comes in a bag, in the body bag, then they will do tayammum. Or even if the tayammum is not possible, then they just, uh, I mean, even that is not uh, required in that situation. And then the body will be placed in the casket and the cast will be lower in the grave. But before that, those who are there, they will pray the Salatul Janaza. And Salatul Janaza, if people can attend that, I mean, they can hold it in the cemetery, very close to the grave, they can have the Salatul Janaza. And uh, those who cannot go to the Salatul Janaza, they are allowed to pray at home. And uh, they can have what you call it Salatul Ghaib. That means the body is not in front of you, but you think of, of that body and then you pray. So family, individual can pray, family can pray. You make your own prayer and the uh, same way as you pray, Salatul Janaza, you say, Allahu Akbar, hold your hand, recite Tasbih, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa jalla sanawak wa la ilaha ghayruk. And then after that you raise your, uh, I mean, you say Allahu Akbar. Some people raise hands, some people don't raise hands, say Allahu Akbar. And then you recite, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. And then after that, you say Allahu Akbar, and then you make a special dua. Allahumma qfi li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ibna, the dua of the, of the janazah. And then after that, the fourth takbir and salam on both sides. So you do it if it is a big gathering or you have to do it in a small gathering. Even one person can do that. So if the body is not in front of you, then you make the intention that you are praying for that person. And that is called Salatul Ghaib. And then after that, the burial takes place. In the burial, uh, it is good to participate on that. But if the situation of infection, person died because of the coronavirus, then you don't have to go all the way and put the body lower. Leave it to those who are in charge, professional. They will do that. And you just stand and after the, the grave is covered, then you make dua and then you leave that place. Now, um, many uh, cemeteries have restrictions of the number of people. In some places they might they may allow 10 people, some places may allow more. Nowadays they are allowing more people. So yes, people can go, but again, observe the social distance. You cannot just uh, crowd and then do that, but you have to follow that, observe that. Have the mask in with you. Wear the mask. And uh, you make dua. If somebody wants to speak, they can speak. And then leave very soon. Don't stay for too long on that. And then those who are uh, over 65 and they have underlying conditions, that means they have heart problem, they have lung problem, they have uh, a cancer, or they may have 
uncontrolled diabetes. So that's called the risky conditions where the infection can come very quick, quickly. So they have to be extra careful. They have to be extra careful, better they don't come and pray from home. Uh, the family members, anyone, they can uh, live stream. They can show the funeral. They can they can make make uh, make a video of that, and then share it with the family members so they can see that, and make dua, make dua from that. But it is important that uh, don't uh, because of the emotions, because of the feeling of sadness and grief. Uh, we should not endanger ourselves and we should not endanger others. So the, as it is important to, to participate in the funeral, it is more important to protect your life, protect your health and do not spread the disease to others. So these are important to keep in your mind. That is, uh, and inshallah, if the intention is right, Allah will reward. Hmm? So sometimes we take action, sometimes we are not able to take action, but we have the right intention, then the reward will come from that, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, that we don't see our uh, dear ones, and uh, our um, those who are very close to us, uh, they, they die because of this disease, may Allah protect them. Uh, but in case if this happens, let us can understand the rules in this matter. Certain things are are required and some certain things are not required and then end up in the situations of necessity the rules are relaxed. The Sharia is Alhamdulillah is built on mercy on uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy yeah? in uh, Deen, Deen is easy, Deen is not difficult and it is very important that uh, the life of uh, oneself as well as other people's lives, uh, we pay attention to that. And we should not put, bring any danger to the life of others as well as our own. Thank you very much, Dr. Siddiqui. Um, you know, very uh, greatly stated by yourself uh, that we should definitely uh, take, care your, take care of ourselves, you know, and, uh, and, and, and that is more important. And I, I really like, you know, the, the innovative idea that you suggested, you know, with, with everything going virtual, um, you know, you can, somebody can also pray from home, you know, if one family member goes and shares that with, within the family uh, or more if they like. But um, uh, if it's because it, it is meaningful for certain family members to just have, uh, you know, to be able to go there to the funeral site or Janazah site. So I think if they, if they're able to just include the family members only, and I think that would do justice for, for them all. Um, other than that, we want to thank you uh, very much for coming uh, to our uh, Friday community message program. The Islamic Shore Council of Southern California is very thankful for yourself and thank you for your service that you continuously uh, provide, enlighten, and educate and spread the word of Islam to all of us. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Siddiqui. May Allah bless. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.